Hello everyone, it's Exo Man. I have a story for you. It's a good story, a happy story. We'll call today's story when Harold met Herbert, or never bring a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, well, we'll sort that out later. But today's story comes from Jackson, South Carolina. And this is a recent story that occurred in, within the past couple of days. So in this town is wandering this recidivistic criminal named Harold Runnels Jr. And Harold is seen walking around this neighborhood and he finds himself at the residence of a Mr. Herbert Parrish and his lovely wife, Lois. So Harold, who is 61 years old, knocks on the door of this elderly couple, gains entry. Okay, so Mrs. Parrish, Lois Parrish is standing there as is her husband, who is an 82 year old decorated Vietnam vet. And Mr. Runnels, wielding a knife, barges in as a home intruder and starts stabbing, okay? So he's going at Mrs. Parrish. And Mr. Parrish, who later explained that it was he was just so horrified, he thought that it was the end for them. Well, instinctively, he lunges and grabs a shotgun that he had mounted off the wall. He takes that shotgun, this is interesting, and pow, he slams the guy in the face with the barrel. Uh, let me tell you, the guy was certifiable, completely ape shit crazy. He lost it, he grabbed a gun, and he gunned him. He <laughs> should take a moment to find, to get his finger on the trigger of that old shotgun. He just slams the guy in the face. And the guy reels back, goes down, and Mr. Parrish proceeds to slam him in the head. While his wife is there bleeding, he's slamming this guy in the head. He, he, he said, I, must, I hit him about 10 times. Didn't even waste a shell on this guy. Just beat the snot out of him right there where he laid and made damn sure that he couldn't get up, which is what I would advise. Well, Mr. Runnels, had he lived, he didn't. He later died in the hospital. He would have learned his, a couple of lessons, valuable life lessons. One, never judge a book by its cover. Two, never bring a knife to a gunfight. And three, come prepared and so on. But uh, he ran out of opportunities to learn lessons that day. Thanks to Mr. Parrish, who did us all a favor. Now, I understand there may be a candlelight vigil and uh, my heart goes out to all the victims in this families on both sides, whatever. Anyway, I just found it to be such an interesting story that I thought if you haven't heard it yet, I wanted to share it with you. So uh, it was, it's my understanding that there is later to be or there has been an autopsy to determine the cause of death of this fellow who was brought in looking like a smashed pumpkin. I can tell you. Death by gun butt. Uh, I found it also interesting the statements of the statements of the spokesperson for the, I guess the sheriff's department, whether it be a sheriff or the chief or the captain or whoever. And the comments went something like this. Yes, you have the right to defend yourself, but the best course of action is always to call the law. No, that's not how it goes always. This was imminent. This was immediate. It's not a good idea when your wife is being stabbed in the face to run and look for a phone if you have other means of protecting her and neutralizing the threat. Mr. Parrish found a way to survive. Had he called, had he gone for a phone? Hey, I'm not telling you what to do, but had Mr. Parrish gone for a phone, his wife would likely be dead and he would likely be dead from a knife to the back. I don't know if these people have ever had a home invasion. I have. And uh, I'll never ever be caught unaware 
because of being, having been through that before. I've had knives and guns pulled on me, the gamut. Again, kudos to you, Mr. Parrish, for doing what you had to do to protect your lovely wife. I'm just, I mean, that, that moves me almost to tears. I don't take joy from violence. I take joy from situations where men and women rise up to challenges and threats like this. And evidently he was somewhat prepared. He did, I'm sure he didn't plan on using his gun in that fashion, but he did what he had to do in that moment. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the story. I hope you're staying safe. My heart goes out to you, all of you in Texas who are suffering with this recent weather-related disaster. I hope things get better as soon as possible. And uh, love to you all. Thanks for watching. Stay well and stay safe. So what do you think you roast a day? Sometimes lately, 20 pounds. A lot, yeah. yeah. 20 pounds, probably. Yeah. Um, we're ramping up slowly, but actually the last couple of weeks it's been getting busy, so. Right. Love it. You're a busy girl. It smells like coffee everywhere around here. <laughs> I love Banshee Moon coffee. I Me it, too. Drink mm. it every morning. And it smells so good. I bring it to the post office and they're like, what smells so good? <laughs> <laughs> My packages. <laughs> and where do you get it? Uh, Etsy.com slash shop slash Banshee Moon. And what does it make uh, a good gift for? Christmas, <laughs> birthdays, Father's Day, Mother's Day. Yeah. Good thinking. Flag Day. <laughs> President's Day. Veterans Day. All right. Nice. Yeah.